All right, so I'm sure we've all seen paper cranes, whether it's in media, in books even, with some elementary books that many of us are familiar with. Um, it's a very common art form, and one that anyone can do with just a simple piece of paper cut into a square. Um, today, I'll be going over how to make paper cranes specifically. Um, they're a symbol of luck and can be helpful for like wishes even in some cultures where if you make a thousand, it's said to grant you a wish. Um, so today I'll be showing how we make them, going over a little bit of the history of the entire practice of origami and the cranes specifically, and why they're beneficial to make. So to start, all you need is a square piece of paper. You're going to take the colored side of it and fold on the diagonals. Keep unfolding it back into a regular square so that you just have those creases in place for you once we get to making the actual base. Now you take the blank side and fold it lengthwise, unfold again, and fold the other direction lengthwise. Now this can be done with as much precision as wanted. Um, while it won't turn out as necessarily neat, you can just go straight through and hope for the best. And generally with simpler projects like this, it'll turn out pretty well. Now, once you have these folds going opposite directions every time, you'll pinch so that they form sort of a star shape and flatten it into a smaller square. At this point, you have two flaps which you'll fold in to the center line to form small triangles. Repeat this on all four pieces so that you have small diamonds on each end. Now, not exactly bird shaped just yet. Um, so you have to unfold fold them again and fold up with the lines in place. And imagine a little horizontal line across the top there. This is where you'll fold up to start forming the wing of the bird. Just pressing that down and pressing the paper flat again gives you a bit longer of a triangle while still maintaining the diamond shape. Repeat this on both sides to get a bit taller of the lines. And once this is complete, you fold them in one more time on the sides, on either end. Works a little bit easier if you have a flat surface rather than trying to do it in the air like this. But afterwards, you take the thinner pieces and invert them in between the larger flaps to give pointed ends, one of which you fold over to fold the face. And by folding the other one up, you have a bird. Now, that's just the process on how to do them. The real history behind them is a bit more complicated. Um, the entire origin of paper folding was either from China or Japan, though historians haven't really figured it out by this point. Um, a lot of cultures, once paper reached them, formed their own traditions with it, but the most commonly known origami um, at least got its namesake from Japan. Um, this can actually even lead into our benefits. Again, as mentioned at the beginning of the speech, um, a lot of cultures believe that if you make so many, it'll grant you luck in either health or wealth or anything, really. It depends on what your personal purpose for it is. Um, not only that, but on a more scientific side, it can help increase uh, hand-eye coordination. Um, it can help you learn a bit more patience when you really <laughs> sit down and try and get the lines perfect. and. It can help with uh, memory in cases where you're trying to remember how to do a specific fold, how to 
figure out where they should be in the space and overall helps with uh, muscle memory. Uh, I completely forgot my question. Cool. So, <laughs> yeah, no, that conclusion is gone. We're good. <laughs>